Okay, what I want to do is answer some of your questions today that you left on uh, some of my videos because, hey, you're not leaving them just to leave them, right? You want some answers? I'll try to give them to you. So it's Sunday, uh, snowy here in Pennsylvania. So I figure, what the heck, let's do it. Do you think it's a coincidence that the girls had an altercation at the grub truck and ended up stabbed to death? Seems weird. I would agree with you. Um, you have to take that stuff into consideration, right? Uh, anything that has happened out of the ordinary within that time frame, especially an altercation of some sort. Now, I don't know what the, the type of the altercation was, so I can't go any further than that. But as an investigator, as a detective, you would certainly view that and then go and talk to those people and your job is to include them or exclude them and from what I saw what I've read they've been excluded so but it's definitely something that I would look into what if Jack called himself from their phones he could leave his phone at home and say he was sleeping uh, I think you're thinking too much Hollywood into this okay killers usually don't think that far that advanced type of thinking I think you're diving way too deep into that uh, does it matter if it were a drug house no one deserves to die like that I seriously don't believe those kids were into drugs at all maybe a little weed people are just stupid I tend to agree with everything you say there JW um, I've been a lot, around a lot of drug houses in my time. I've seen drug houses, trap houses get robbed, but that is usually where large amounts of drugs are being kept or used, but normally stashed. College kids, girls, I, I doubt they were running a cartel type of business out of that. They may have had a little... Uh, a drug house uh, I would I don't know because I, I'm not investigating the case but from the outside looking in I say no way with murder cases like these it's usually always an unknown person unknown to the public and media just like the Delphi case uh, I don't know if I would go all the way and say almost always an unknown person but I get what you're saying there cat okay Crazy you just mentioned VDOC after, after I asked that question. Still would like to know more about what you think of them. I, I think VDOC is a tremendous society. I have nothing bad to say about them. Again, I knew one of the three founding fathers of it, Richard Walter. Uh, I think maybe, I don't know if we had a falling out. I don't know if that is a correct terminology to use. But when I started my own organization, uh, he had called me and asked me about that. He had said, Ken, my boy, uh, I hear you're starting your own cold case organization. I said, yes, sir, I am. And I was waiting for some, uh, I don't know, some pushback. And his words were, my boy, this world deserves more cold case organizations. But that was the last I ever talked to him. And I had tried to reach out to him a couple times and got no response. So... I know he was in some bad health, and uh, I, I don't know. I haven't talked to him since. But I will always speak fondly of VDOC. I will always speak fondly of Richard Walter, especially the way he treated me, inviting me to his house, gave me, uh, gave me a book, gave me a bottle of cool case Chardonnay that I cherish. He also came to my office in the district attorney's office and went over the case that I was went down to see him on originally the Gail Matthews Tamara Burkheiser case and he drove on his own dime 
his little white van all the way up to Lycoming County, came to my office, and we sat in with the district attorney and for two hours went over the case and his suggestions. Never asked for a thing. Yes, he did. I apologize. He asked for a cup of black coffee, which I provided. I learned that he did it on his own. Just tells you, to me, what type of man he was. Is. So... That's what I know about VDOC, just what I've learned from him. And if all VDOC members uh, treat people like he does, I would say it's an even greater organization than what it already is. Now, I will say there's probably some people in VDOC that don't like me because of me starting my own cool case, and they think it's some sort of rival type of thing. Listen, it's nothing, it was nothing like that. I explained why I started the organization that I did. In other videos so please go back and look at it there are killers who kill solely for self-gratification and a victim's age race gender etc doesn't have anything to do with it exclamation point okay that's not a question but I get what you're saying there a person not used to seeing blood but commits a very bloody murder like multiple stabbings I think comes from blind rage Okay, I tend to agree with that, maybe too. What is the most likely reason the two girls on floor one were not harmed? Well, it's got to be, there could be a, many reasons. One is he didn't know they were there. Two, he knew them and they were not part of his rage or his target. Um, he could have expended all of his energy one of the four victims, therefore, just left. Something might have happened during the stabbings of those four victims. Uh, maybe he got cut. Who knows? One put up a bigger fight. Thought he made a noise. They made a noise. They screamed something that he was going to get caught. So he left. Didn't finish what he intended to do. Many reasons. So that's the best answer that I can give on that. How would they come to the conclusion it happened at 3 a.m. if the roommate didn't discover them until about noon that day? Uh, you, you're just, you have a time gap between when the last known activity was from the victims, when they were found, but then you can start kind of deducing on other things until you narrow that time gap. Um, I would say that, you know, more than likely, it happened when it was dark. So there you could deduce it down from the last known activity. Let's say it's 2.55 a.m. to when it starts getting daylight out. And then maybe there was something else that happened in there, a surveillance video, something that makes it closer to 3 a.m. I don't know. Only the police and investigators know that. What do you think of... Oh, I guess this is a suspect's name, and I don't usually do that. Or no, he's not even a suspect, so why would I even say it? I, I'm not even going to comment on it. I think it's, I think it's ludicrous that people bring out these people's names, boyfriends. Uh, I just don't like it. I appreciate your honest and straightforward, brutal, honest opinion. Well, that's. All I know how to do. Do you think there was an SOS text or call put out by any of the four? Julie, that would be complete speculation, and I, I have no idea. I would say more than likely, no. Just because, you know, you're stabbed, the, it only takes one stab wound to become fatal to the chest. Um, but I don't know. Paragraph, 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 paragraph. The father said the girls were killed differently, more viciously than the other. So they were definitely targeted. Gregory, that's not true. That's not true. I don't know how many times I have to say that. What if somebody put up, what if one of the girls put up a bigger fight? Let's say one of the girls was asleep and the offender started stabbing the one that was asleep and the other one woke up. 
So the first one is not going to have as many stab wounds, right? She was asleep. Second one woke up and fought back. And he is trying to kill her, so he, she has more damage, more stab wounds. That does not mean she was targeted. I'm sorry that I get angry over this. It's just like, it seems like I go over it, over it, over it, and over it. Love your thoughts on the case. Respect your opinion. I watched the interview on Newsweek and thought she was rude. Or News Nation. I don't think she was rude. But I just wasn't following her narrative, that's all. I wonder if an a Ouija board was found on property. Alex, come on, man. You're better than that. Oh. No, no response. Question, does this seem like a first-time killer? It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell by that. You don't know. Um, there's been plenty of mass killings that were done by first-time killers. Usually not with knife, but still. What if the knife was the only thing that he had access to? And he had these fantasies. And he didn't have a gun. Justice's clip-clops again. Now he's staring at me thinking I'm talking about him. And he hasn't laid down yet. I'm sure you'll hear when he lays down. I love seeing your membership numbers going up. Richly deserved. Thank you, Angela. I appreciate that. I did look last night. And it went from uh, where I, the last time I looked it was at 70 something thousand. And it's at 81 this morning when I look. So I think that's good. So I appreciate it. I'm not trying to sell my book, quotations, as I continually reference it and have it prominently displayed over my shoulder. Well, ham for free. It is the name of the channel, if I do say so myself. Uh, doesn't mean I'm trying to sell it, because guess what? I got a member of the family right there from Diane Lake that she gave to me. Am I trying to sell that book too? Come on, use a little common sense. Quit being and leave stupid comments. Jack's DNA. He stayed there. That's dumb. This guy's good. He should be a detective. Whoa, touche, buddy. Hey, I think that was a condescending comment too, but I'll leave it. You think it's one of the surrounding neighbors? I think, I think that's where I would look. Obviously, you want to start there and work your way out. But with the news of a car... And it doesn't seem like it's a witness. To me, it seems like it's a little bit more than that. Uh, but I would say probably, it's, I would guess it's not a, a transient type person. That's my belief. Again, I go back to somebody that has been in the area, has seen those girls, seen that house. That's what I believe. Hi Ken, love your show. Are you able to support criminal profiling with statistics? For example, most ex-military turned professional assassins for hire are between the ages of 35 and 40. No, I'm not able to do that because I, I don't know that. Yes, criminal profiling, that involves statistics, of course. Um, but what you're asking about military turned professional assassins, listen, this wasn't done by a professional assassin. Okay, let's leave that to the video games. Unless you found something in the victim's criminal history that would suggest that. For example, say the guy, Ethan, was running drugs for a cartel. Okay, well then you can include it. I'm pretty sure you're not going to find that in his background. You might, I don't know, I'm not there, I'm not the investigator. But once you rule that out, come on, there's no professional assassins. In this case, there are in life, but not in this case. Oh, let's see. I have something that is puzzling me. The police seem to think that all four victims were attacked while they were sleeping. Okay, I can't read the rest because you wrote 
a paragraph and you have 25 statements and questions in there so I apologize for that Postmortem mutilation is more likely to show intention than overkill. Let's say killer is a hunter and field dresser mutilates one out of X number of victims. That could point to his fantasy target. Uh, j just because somebody mutilates uh, and kills with a knife does not mean that they are a hunter. Okay, Take that out of the equation. How do I know that? Because I've seen hundreds of cases where people were killed by knives and they weren't hunters. Look at Richard Speck. Okay. I mean, well, maybe he was, he, you can't say he's an avid hunter. Okay. So let's get that out of the equation too. Is there generally a time lapse when detectives move a homicide case onto cold case status? Yeah, it's when all active leads dry up. Once you get the lab reports back, there's nothing there. You've interviewed everybody, went back and re-interviewed everybody, went back to the crime scene, uh, watched surveillance again, reviewed all their social media again, all their internet searches again. Uh, and in the meantime, your desk keeps piling up with these other robberies, all these other bank fraud cases, and somebody is in your ear saying, hey, we got to look at these. So then that... Idaho case goes over to the corner of your desk and then pretty soon it goes back here that's how a case comes cold there's no specific time frame so glad I found your channel you stick to the facts retired probation officer here thank you Rochelle I appreciate that and appreciate your service could there be a connection between the six coyote mutilations of the Greek life house pranks in 2017 and the fact all the victims were in Greek life of the university? Could it have been the first open act of regression? I mean, yeah, it certainly could have. I don't know anything about what you're mentioning there. I haven't seen the police come out and say anything about that. Therefore, I will not take it as fact. Is it possible for someone to commit a multiple victim stabbing murder without leaving footprints? It seems impossible to me. Yes, it's very possible, especially if everyone's laying in bed. If everybody's in bed, people are not up, walking around, dripping blood for you to step in, and all that blood is contained in a bed where your feet are not, um, it's very possible that you're not going to leave any bloody footprints. Pertinent that Maddie's boyfriend was away and Kaylee's was back in town. No. You're so damn reasonable I had to subscribe. Thank you, Marty. I appreciate that. You're my new crime daddy. Whoa. Okay. Clickbait. Oh, this comes from somebody from Unsolved Crimes. How is this clickbait? If anybody, never mind. I don't even know why that comment's still there. Was Kernoodle, Kernoodle's mother arrested for drug trafficking? That's what I've heard. I haven't heard that for a fact, so I am not going to answer that book. Ken, you are a fair and rational true crime YouTuber. Ah, uh, no! I appreciate the first part of that. I'm not a YouTuber. I will never come around to that. I'm a detective. Always been a detective. I started this to get cold cases out in the forefront. People didn't forget. And it has morphed into sort of true crime stuff. But I've never, I don't even know what a YouTuber is. It, I, I, if that's somebody that, like, I, I, just, I don't I don't even know I don't even know what to say I don't want to be I'm not an author either I hate when people say oh, today's guest is um, a detective uh, FBI agent author undercover YouTube hey 
Just a detective. That's it. End of story. I'm not, I guess technically I'm an author. I've wrote 10 books, but I don't want to be known as an author. I never wanted to be known as an author. I wrote a book in order to get my words out there. Uh, I'm not a YouTuber, I'm not an FBI agent. I worked for the FBI uh, undercover. Wasn't never an agent. Just a detective. Just a country boy. That's all. <sighs> Let's see. I'm trying to get rid of these paragraphs. I'm so glad someone is calling out all the mental gymnastics and conspiracy reasoning people always just want to come up with when they've got no real info on any of the situations. Yeah, I hear you on that. Love your insight. Where can we find your book? Hey, see that, Mr. Somebody doesn't promote their book or always promoting their book? Somebody asked about it. There you go. I guess I can point to it now and promote my book. I like how direct and to the point. So refreshing. Listen, well, what other way is there? I know there's a lot of other people in this world that want to be fake, uh, want to portray something different. Hey, that's not me. What you see is what you get. It's always the way it is. Honesty always plays out. Truth always is the best. Always. As college students, you just can't live in fear. No one can. Be aware of your surroundings at all times. Stick close. Very good advice. I would agree with you. Do you think the killer could be a highly respected member of the community that no one would ever suspect at all? The Colonel Russell Williams Air Force case in Trenton, Ontario, Canada comes to my mind for exactly this reason. Uh, yeah, I mean, as we've learned through history, anybody can kill. And on top of that, you have a small percentage that are violent sexual predators. And within that group is people that have sexual fantasies. Colonel Russell Williams, I'm vaguely familiar with that case, where he was dressing up in girls' women's underwear and bras and taking pictures of himself, and he was a colonel in the Air Force. And um, the interrogation of that I remember watching a long time ago. But, yeah, that just goes to show you, it certainly could be... Um, It could be. I'm going to say it's possible. I will not say that that's probable. Any more comments on the Idaho murders? Nancy, I'm trying. I'm trying, trying, trying. Uh, does this remind you of the Denny Rawlings in Florida? Sure it does. Sure it does. And I mean, not every aspect of it, but it, sh it sure does. Wouldn't you think if the killer came upon Ethan and Zaina first, assuming they weren't the target, the killer would be concerned there would be more males around and flee? Well, Jen, that's very possible. You know, you, we like to think that we know what's going on inside the killer's mind. And that was, a, that was a mistake that I made very on in my career. Even as a patrolman, when I first started investigating burglaries, Okay, I'd go to a residence or a business. I would see where they made entry, see what was disturbed, and I would stand back and say, okay, where would he go from here? Put myself in the killer's mind. That was a mistake, and I learned from that because you don't know what they're thinking. You are not them. You do not have the same brain. Uh, synapses, the, the firing of all the cylinders that is going on, the adrenaline, you don't have any of that that they have. So you can't think the way they're thinking. You don't know what situation occurred why they were there. Maybe they were standing there getting ready to do something and they heard somebody scream from down the road and it startled them and so their mind changed and they decided to do this instead. Now you're there the next day 
trying to piece it all together and you're sitting there like, all right, he took money from the register. Well, what would he do? I guess now he accomplished his goal. He would go out the back door. But we don't know that he heard that scream and he went and hid in the bathroom. See what I'm saying? So you cannot look at it through the mind of a killer all the time. Now, sometimes in old, old cases like Sherry Joe Bates, when I went back to the crime scene and stand there and look at buildings, look at landscapes, then you can. I'm seeing what he's seeing. I want to do that. But seeing what he's seeing and thinking what he's thinking are two very separate things. My gut instinct is jealousy and the culprit is female. Well, see, Lisa, that is your first mistake, is going by your gut instinct, okay? You have to stay away from that in, in homicides, in unsolved cases, period. You can't go with your gut instinct, okay? You got to go with facts. Now, your second part of that, that it's female, I would say, say it is possible, but it's not probable based on statistics, Do the cops check cameras from early in the night to see if the perp was in the house hiding and waiting for them to all to go to sleep? I'm sure they've checked every surveillance footage camera within a 10 mile radius. I'm sure they have. River says, why can't this be a woman who did this? It, it's possible. Possible. They were lesbians. The ex-boyfriend did it. Well, see there, Bob, I, I don't like that comment because you have nothing to back that up because they were in the same bed together. And even if they were lesbians, you're pointing the, boy, the finger at the ex-boyfriend, and that's wrong. You are part of the problem in this true crime community. You can't accuse somebody like that when you don't know. All you're doing is ruining that person's life. You're feeding into that. And somebody responded judgmental much. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Ken, you cracked me up commenting about some of the comments you get. Thanks again for Q&A. Semper Fi. Well, Semper Fi to you as well. When they do find the killer, will they give us all the information of what happened? No. I mean, they can, but think of Delphi. Did they give you all the information? No, they gave you just enough to make an arrest in the probable cause affidavit and release that. And I guarantee Delphi police have a lot more than that they put out in that probable cause affidavit. If you haven't read or watched what my thoughts were on that affidavit, you should scroll back into my videos and go check. We are living in a very difficult time. People are just plain going mental. Well, yeah, maybe you're right. Paragraphs. Paragraphs. The coroner said that each body had a deliberate fatal wound that was in the upper chest area as well as multiple stab wounds. I think that it's very significant because it shows calculation at making sure no one survived his attacks. No. No, no it isn't. Well, he's obviously going in there to kill. When you're stabbing people, you're not stabbing to wound them. Uh, so I wouldn't say, I don't know, it shows calculation. Well, yeah, sure it does, I guess. He, he's stabbing where he's trying to kill them, plain and simple which sounds like a hit. It's no hit. Come on now. Let's just say what it is, human sacrifice.
Do we and the investigators know how long all the roommates lived in the house? The ones killed and the ones not. I am sure that the police investigators know that. I'm sure they're checking into that. I do not know. I can see how he, I can't, I, I think you meant I can't. I can't see how he wouldn't get cut. He probably had thick gloves on. There's also gloves that you can buy for fishing and crabbing that have metal mesh lining so you don't get cut. Yeah, I agree with that. If dogs and whatnot are all limited by money budgets, how is every city and state in the God blank country in the red financially? They want it bad enough, they get it. Okay. I can't, I don't, nothing there for me to answer. BTK killed all those people and didn't sexually assault any of his victims. Correct. He said that his murders were sexually motivated. Exactly. The murder itself is what got him off. Exactly. He said he would never cheat on his wife as if adultery was worse sin than murder. I've been saying that all along. Thank you, Gail, for that comment. Because people always ask me, why are you saying this is a sexually motivated crime when the police are saying none of them were raped? Now, I'm not going to get into why. Go back and watch my videos that I've done, and it explains it. And I used BTK as an example of that. So, thank you for that comment. Good grief. YouTube somehow thought I might be interested in a cross-dresser tarot reader on the Idaho case. Hopefully you, you weren't referring to me. I got my Jack Dempsey shirt on. That's far from uh, cross-dressing the Manasa Mahler. One of the most intimidating boxers of all time. Uh, I hope you're not referring to me as a cross-dressing tarot reader. Please. Please, God, don't say Hey, do you think the killer lives in Cascade Mountains? No idea. It's a video showing a guy walking around them while they are at the food truck. I think they were targeted that day and I think it was more a crime of opportunity. It's possible, for sure. And apparently it was frat related. I saw nothing from the police to indicate that, so I will not go down that uh, windy trail. If DNA is found at scene but not in the database, are the authorities able to access familial DNA? If so, what is the process like? Yes. So, well, the first thing that you would do, okay, is if you have a suspect, let's say you find DNA at the crime scene, you would run it through CODIS, and let's say it comes back nothing found but you are positive that this dna is your killer let's say it was a blood drip from uh, him cutting himself if it did occur but let's say it's in an area that indicates that it more than likely was how well how would that be uh, i don't know let's say it was found leading outside okay yes it could be from the victims but you test it and it's a different blood type than the victims so more than likely it's the offenders and you get a full DNA profile, you run it through CODIS, no results. You have that. I mean, I'll take that lead. Anybody will take that lead. I have the killer. It's right here. I have him. It's perfect. I just don't have a name yet. Okay? But I got it. I got it. I'll take that. So then you're going to start developing your suspects. Well, this guy looks good. Okay? I'll go to him. Hey, can I get your DNA? We have, I may or may not tell him I have DNA, but can I get yours? If he says no, ooh, okay. He moved up a little bit in my thought process, not meaning he's guilty. Maybe he just doesn't trust the government. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't trust the government half the time, but I'm gonna get his DNA, okay? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna get the undercovers. They're gonna follow him around till he discards his cigarette his napkin, whatever it is, and we'll get DNA that way. Now, if that doesn't work, um, I will go back, I'll sit down at my desk and I'll say, okay, now why is he potentially a suspect? Why did I go and 
talk to him to begin with. And I will try to articulate probable cause to get a search warrant to get his DNA. Now see, I have done both in cases. I have followed people around to get trash to get their DNA from. I have also not been successful. Somebody has says, hey, you're not getting my DNA. I didn't do this crime. And I'm thinking, well, you're a suspect. There's a reason I'm talking to you. Uh, I'm going to get it one way or another. And I tell them that. And I told many of people this. Listen, you can refuse. And you have every right to. Okay? But I'm going to get your DNA. One way or another. I'm, I'm going to get it. I even went to a funeral home after a guy died. So I went to him. I said, hey, I need your DNA for this case. He's like, no, I'm not giving you my DNA. I went back. I'm looking at things, looking at his criminal history. I'm like, oh, this is good. He was in the area. Uh, he has past history with this. I'm liking this. And he refused DNA. Well, a week later, I get a phone call. He died. He had a heart attack. Died. I'm like, uh, okay. He's in... He's in the funeral home getting ready to get embalmed. Guess where I went? Right to the funeral home. Whoom, unzipped the bag, put my finger in his mouth, took my DNA swab around his mouth. Before I zipped it up, I said, I told you I'd get your DNA. Whoop, zipped it up, got his DNA, took it to the lab, and guess what? He wasn't the murderer. But I got his DNA, just like I said I would. So there's many ways that you're going to get DNA to roll in or roll out. You can't rely on CODIS as, hey, let's put it in CODIS and see what happens. What if it's a, a juvenile? What if it's somebody that's never been arrested? you got to physically go and get their DNA. That's the first choice. And you do it through voluntary consent or you do it by getting a, a court order or a search warrant. Then, the next step is to follow them around and get it from them without their knowing. Hopefully that answered your question on that. Why do you think law enforcement isn't releasing the criminal profile developed by the FBI? Um, because they don't need to. Okay, that's an investigative tool. They use it. They are not going to give it to the public where these internet sleuths can run rampant with it and say, oh, that matches this guy. Let's go to his doorstep and knock on his door and interrupt his whole way of life and say, hey, this sure matches you, doesn't it? That's why. They did that, I learned, in the Texas killing fields. And they ruined a guy's life because of it. This true crime stuff has gone crazy with this internet and the internet sleuthing. It just really has. There's some that are so good, so respectful, do it for the right reasons. And there's others that should just be criminally prosecuted for what they do. The rumors they start, I'm not even going on my rant again. I've done it too many times. I heard the two friends were in their bed, but what about the couple? Were they in bed as well? I don't know. I'm not going to speculate. Ken, have you been asked to help with this case? No, nope. and I will not be asked. The only way that I would be asked would be by one of the family members. Law enforcement has no interest in my help. Why? They got enough people there. Okay, I guarantee you, of all the people working there, the FBI, there's people uh, better than me. I have no doubt. <laughs> So there's no reason for me to be involved. If they wanted my help and asked, I would never turn them down. But it just won't happen. The police were called to the frat house around the same time as murder, window 3 a.m. Just something to consider. Okay, it's considered. I think you're too hard on lab techs. You say they don't understand what it's like for you but you don't understand the science and technology behind what they do to understand what it's like for them either. Cassie, fair enough. Fair enough. I never feel that the victims and their loved ones have been exploited when I watch Ken Mains. 
Well, it's because I don't exploit them. Ken says, you, don't, you didn't hear shit. I ain't got time for that. Just love your attitude. Some people love it. Some people don't. It's the way it is, I guess, right? Not everybody's going to like you. What do you think of psychics? I don't. Could this be a serial killer in the making? Could be. Very well. Or maybe it's a serial killer already made. Or maybe not. <laughs> footprints in the snow. Bloody footprints in the house. DNA statistics. You, I don't understand what that question is. I absolutely love this channel. Thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you for your answers on the ridiculous drug theories. It's stupid and disrespectful. I addressed that earlier in this video as well. Most teenagers don't use Facebook. Okay, good. I think they're all on Instagram now. I don't know. I don't keep up with it. Listen, I'll be honest. I only have social media. I have Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook because of this channel. I don't, you know, that's the only reason. I'm not a big fan of social media. I got to be honest. But just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's not to be liked. That's how kids are nowadays. I know when I was younger, my dad didn't like me listening to Motley Crue. He sure didn't like me listening to Metallica. And jamming and having my long hair and my earrings and my bandanas wrapped around my legs. That's what the kids did. So I'm not going to harp on people about social media. So... It's one thing I've learned. Just because I don't like something doesn't mean it's not to be done. I think that DNA should be required to go to school to be helpful if it's ever needed. Yeah, kind of violation of your uh, constitutional rights right there. If the police are certain this was a targeted attack, does it seem logical to assume that the killer left a message of some kind at the scene? And I discussed that. Yes, that is very well could be one of the reasons that they think that it's a targeted attack. Now, they backtracked on that a little bit, so I don't know what they meant. All right. Justice, you hear him snoring over there? Justice, you can't be down here snoring when I'm trying to do a video. He wags his tail, but he's going to go right back to snoring, so you're just going to have to bear with it until I'm finished here. How did the perp get away without leaving a massive trail of blood? I don't know. He is going to be bloody. There is no doubt about it. He took the knife with him. The knife is going to be dripping blood. Now, there could be something. He could have wiped it off in there. We don't know. We don't know what they found in there. So, but he is not going to be like gushing blood. He's going to have good blood on him. But just because you have blood on you, uh, you know, when I used to hunt, you know, you, gutting a deer and things, you get blood on you. Sometimes a lot of blood, but it ain't dripping off of you. Okay. And again, if everything's contained to the bed, you're not really going to get it on the soles of your, your footwear. So, I would think that if he was leaving, it's possible he would brush up something and you get a smear, a transfer of blood somewhere, but to be dripping in blood, no. Do you think a female could have done it? I already addressed that. Also, could there be more than one offender? I, I am pretty confident to say no. One offender. That's one thing that I will pretty much stay my confidence on. But I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Thanks for keeping me from going down rabbit holes. You're welcome. In summation of this video to the questions, anything is possible, period. That's right. Anything is possible. And if you don't believe that, if you're dead set on saying the boyfriend did it, um, 
then you're a jackass. Basically, I mean, that's what you are. You're a fool. Unless you have the police reports and you know what the investigators know. If Other than that, you're just guessing, which makes you a jackass, especially if you put it out there. It's my opinion. If you love Elvis and Waylon and Cash, surely you love Dwight Yoakam. Hmm. I mean, I wouldn't put Dwight Yoakam and Waylon Jennings or Johnny Cash or Elvis Presley's uh, stratosphere. That's for sure. But then again, not a lot of people are. Definitely agree with what you've heard so far. It's a sexual driven fantasy. I mean, that's high up on my list, but hey, an anger retaliatory type of murder, this very well could be. But my point being is once you rule that out, you have to look at the sexually fantasy driven homicide. Okay? My opinion. I agree that dad definitely didn't do it. Please answer this if you can with all your experience. Do you think this case will be solved? Yeah, I do. I'm an optimist. I wonder if anything was actually missing from the house. I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. Ten. If the killer's DNA is not in the database, say because he's never been convicted, however his sister has been, would it be possible to identify the suspect through familiar DNA? Yes. Yes. It would be. I think you'd have a better... Now, I'm not an expert on genealogy, but I think you would have better results if it was his brother and not his sister. But I'm not sure. Either way, I think would work. Do you think this was their first kill? I have no way of knowing that. There's no way of knowing that. You got to imagine this offender took a risk. Okay? I think that they were watching the house because a normal offender it, it sees five vehicles, six vehicles in that parking lot and still goes in there and commits the act of murder, that's taking a big risk. Um, so, I mean, that would push you away, I think, from saying it was their first kill. But then again, if they're watching, they know everybody's in there asleep, maybe it's very rare that they're gonna be just one person in that house. It's always a group of people which is seems like that's reality so for the offender to say you know what I can't get the targeted person alone in this house so I'm just gonna go in and deal with whatever's there I mean it's possible right but then it gets me thinking if one person was targeted why not kidnap her and take her when she's alone. Maybe because you're afraid of the fight, the resistance you're going to get. So going in a, into a house where everybody's asleep, even though there's multiple people, makes more sense for you. Again, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that one. It's very hard without the crime scene to be able to tell you what, what transpired, what type of offender it is, what type of kill it is, anger, retaliatory, fantasy driven. It's just hard. I love how you organize your playlist, Detective Mains. Easy findings. Well, I'm a very organized person in general. I like things organized, so yes, I did that. Go back and look at the playlist. There's a lot of people that asked me to look at cases. Hey, could you look at the uh, Summer Wells case? No one already did it. You just got to go back and check. That's all. I quit answering questions and comments specifically about that because, hey, go back and look. I suspect the two girls upstairs were in the same room because Kaylee had already moved her furniture out. Well, that makes sense.
How does a first timer get lucky enough that he can kill four people by stabbing and still not leave enough evidence behind that evades capture? Because it's happened hundreds of times in the past. Okay, we just don't know about them. Okay, you only know about the big cases um, that make headlines. It's happened before. I'm not saying this is a first time killer, um, but that has happened in the past. Why would the killer take a trophy? It seems cumbersome. And how would they know they were good at sports anyway? Please tell me that's uh, an ill attempt at humor. And you're not being serious. If you are being serious, I, I apologize. They don't mean trophy as in a sports participation trophy. A trophy to the killer could be as simple as a piece of her clothing, her driver's license, and they use that to relive their fantasy. Wow, okay. Ken, what other YouTubers say is, well, I'm not a YouTuber, number one. What other you blanks say is, if this video gets 50,000 likes, I'll set up a visit to the murder house and we'll talk about the crime and the crime scene. Well, good for them. I'm not one of those people. I could care less, you know, if I get 50,000 likes for this video or any other video. I do it for education. This is actually under the educational uh, category of YouTube. A lot of true crime stuff is under entertainment, I, and it's not entertainment, at least it's not to me. Murphy knows who did it. Murphy's the dog, I'm assuming. You're right about that. Wish they could talk. It was a local policeman who visits a food truck often late at night buddy you shouldn't even visit my channel okay to make an asinine statement like that you're part of the problem not part of the solution and if you're not part of the solution leave <sighs> could it be a police officer absolutely it could be a veterinarian it could be a doctor it could be your next door neighbor but to state it like that you're a joke. Absolutely can stalk two people. Delphi, probably done more often with children. I would love to read your book. This has nothing to do with this case. I was wondering how I could get a signed copy of it. Well, go to my website, KenMains.com. All my books are on there. You can get whatever signed copy you want. Send me an email. Just tell me, hey, I want this book for Christmas. If I have them, I'm running out, but I'll certainly I'll sign a copy and send it to you. Not for free. <laughs> Unsolved No More. What is the name of the song that begins in your format? See, this is another one that I quit answering. Every, I must have 5,000 comments of people asking it. And if you would scroll through, you would find the answer, but I just quit. I'm tired of answering people. It was Dallas Kincaid, uh, Love and Fears. All right, this is the last one from Jay Bolt, who is a member. Do you believe in convicting someone of murder in the first for being at a crime scene with a group of people? Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. I don't think I have an answer for that. So you know, what I think of is the Manson killings. Um, Manson was at one of the crime scenes earlier, and then he left after he tied up the victims, Rosemary and Lino LeBianca, and he orchestrated the murders, and he got convicted, and he was sentenced to death. Um, I would say that it would have to be on an individual basis, individual case basis. Um, just because someone didn't commit the act of murder, but they knew murder was being committed, 
should they be held as accountable as somebody that actually committed the act of murder? I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that. That's a bad one to leave on. I'm going to go to another one. Uh, because I don't like being stumped there. And you kind of stumped me on that one. Paragraphs, paragraphs, paragraphs. I love the way you digress. I always seem to do it quite a bit. Okay, we'll end at this. From Melanie. Is there a way to tell how long the killer stayed in the house after the murders? No. Not that I can think of, right? Um, you can tell certain things like uh, if the body has, you know, post-mortem mutilations, post-mortem stab wounds where the blood isn't seeping and it's coagulated, um, or what it is, I mean, you could tell maybe a little bit, but I, to give a time frame, I mean, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. So, and that's it. Another thing that people don't talk about is Washington State University is eight miles away. That's a good point, you know. So, all right, that's enough questions and answers on the Idaho murders today. A lot of them. I'll keep answering them if you want me to. I will never go to the scene. You will never see that. Somebody asked me that again. Could you go to the scene and see what you... No. I'm not interjecting myself in any investigation. And even if I'm not interjecting myself, I'm not going to go there and disturb the rest of the neighborhood. I mean, for what? Why would I go there? To act like a big shot? You know? Walk around? Try to show up the police? Hey, look, I found this evidence over here. You think this could be part of it? and then make a video of it? No, that's not me. I would never do that. I'm not a news journalist either. I'm not gonna go there. I would, I would just never would do that. Now, a couple years from now, if the case is not solved, yeah, well then maybe I would go there and look around, get an investigation, or if one of the family members or somebody hired me, yeah, that's a different story. But if somebody that's just, you know, Given his opinion, his through his training and his experience to the public in a factual manner, which is what I try to do, and not speculate and come out with all these asinine theories, um, I don't need to go there. I, I, I would never do it. To me, it's just, uh, I don't know what the word is. It seems slimy to me. It really does. But that's just me. I don't care what other people do. Do your thing, right? I stay in my lane do my thing, which is being a detective. So, hey, that's it for this Q&A. Stay tuned all week for True Detective Talk, where I talk about current events, some cold cases, what's in the news, what I'm thinking. Might talk about some music, might talk about some sports. Who knows? But mostly, it's true crime. But I throw a little bit of nuggets here and there in. Uh, I forgot to thank the people that sent me my Primus shirt. Actually, I got three or four of them in the mail. I just made a quick mention that I wanted a Primus shirt. You guys are freaking awesome. Somebody just sent me this book. Dave. Out of the blue. Zodiac Killer. Just the Facts. By Tom Voigt. I know Tom Voigt has a Zodiac website. I don't know him personally. Um, but, hey, I, I appreciate you sending me that book. Uh, Dave. So, that's it. Thank you, all the fans out there. Q&A, done. Watch all week. True Detective Talk. Okay? Stay in the loop. Hands out.